adversity, bring it. The struggle, we welcome it. Snooze on life, never that. We are Dave Regina and Mike Perella, and this is the No Snooze Podcast. Come on. Welcome back, No Snooze Podcast, episode 83. Ironic that the big three is in the house today. No Satchel Sanchez. So I am here with Michael, New Shoes Pirelli. Ah, clap it up, clap it up. And, for a, uh, clap for um, and Claudio, the voice, Valenzuela. I am Dave, the body, Regina, sitting here with a fantastic scarf that I'll tell you about. What do you think of this, Mikey? Uh, big man in a scarf <laughs> is something that... Big I, man in a little scarf. Big man, little scarf. <laughs> couple questions right off the right okay, off the Right jump. off the rip. Well, let's dive into the fashion right off the Go rip. ahead. How do you wear your scarf? <laughs> you're going to say, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> what are those? How do you wear your scarf? So I do it two ways. But first, can I tell you about the scarf? Yeah. yeah you okay. So I scarf. bought my wife, if you're listening to this, and I'm looking right at you, Karina. All right. I am pissed off because I've had my eye on this scarf. I bought it for you about a year ago. You haven't worn it since. Not not crazy, but it's a nice Gucci scarf. You know, nice uh, unisex. It's uh, reversible here. So you got the white and the gray. Yeah. Right. I've had my eye on this thing, and I've seen the tags on it for almost a year now. If you're not going to wear it, I'm going to wear it, and I'm going to wear it well. All see, right? I see. You would wear it. <laughs> I would return it and get the cash and back. Just and just get the cash like, back right, well, and then invest it in Bitcoin. Oh, no. Just buy another gift in the future <laughs> or that. But, but anyway, yeah. So if you're watching this, I'm sorry. I think it's mine now. So now I'm here to answer your question. That's fair. So <laughs> it's a re-gift to yourself. Re-gifted. I cut the tags off. Did you buy it knowing that, listen, if she doesn't wear it, I'll wear it. I mean, it was unisex and it's okay, gray. So, you, so you know, I figured, so yeah, but I wasn't really going to put it on um, today because I have a turtleneck on. So a turtleneck scarf, I didn't really know how it was going to go. I think if you wear a scarf, you would also wear a turtleneck. Like, I don't think it <laughs> one hinders the other. It's actual double coverage because CB the said, turtleneck the pack? covers the neck, right? <laughs> Turtle yeah. neck covers it. Gotcha. Then you have a scarf also covering the neck. Gotcha. Do you have I a did cold it, neck. I did, I did it more for the drip. Yeah, um, rip my drip. Rip New my segment drip. segment on no snooze. There you go. Phenomenal shoes, by the way. Thank you. Thank these are cap toe Oxfords. Thank you, Dana. I did my research. No, you, I bought these. No, nah, thank you, Dana. I don't trust Dana. their. I bought them online. Pickup at Nordstrom's. 50% off. Free pickup. Free pickup. Right. Which, eh, you know. Ship to store I like for to, free. I right? like to go to play. Like for shoes. Suits. I feel like you have to try it on. Yeah. I'm kind of kicking myself because they are very painful right now. Yes. I think they new. fit well, but it's always hard. Size up, size down. Do you think there's a market for someone to pre-break in shoes? <laughs> <laughs> like, That's pretty funny. Just have like, somebody walking around Nordstrom in that your has kicks? similar foot. Yes. You know, because this uh, is the worst phase of all phases. Like, I agree. I hate this. Phase. And then the back too, right? Back is the back. Is the tough. right. T- I'm figuring out a callus with Doctor Scholes on my left foot. <laughs> And I feel like I'm creating another one on my right heel. Yeah. So, but well, uh, back to good. the scarves. So you rock it with the drip, right? So you just let it. You just yeah. let it drape. I, I just let it sit. I let it sit. Or you can do one of these bad See, boys. I go aggressive. Look, or you I'll can show do, you how I rock. Look, look, look. Do one of these because this is a long scarf too, right? So See, it, that makes me it, feel like you're British. It will still, it will still hang a little bit. Um, so yeah. that that yeah, I could do can there. Can I show you how yeah, I wear yeah, my yeah, scarves? Show me, show me, show me. I, keep in mind, I don't wear scarves often, but. I do get chilly on the neckline because I am in a suit and I have a down coat. Well, you got a little neck. There's so. not a lot of coverage. If you lifted weights, you'd uh, you'd have a bigger neck. You ever do it like this? Oh yeah, yeah. That's this that's is a, my go-to. But so that's because it hangs short. It's too short. It tucks into your into it, the coat. It's very that's uh, an efficient very way. Very sharp. That's an efficient way of wearing a scarf. And it keeps my head in. The, you know. <laughs> yes. Do you like that? I, I do. Yeah, yeah. That's, I, that's I think good. I own. Maybe we could keep it off. Two now. scarves. Um, you know what drives me? It doesn't drive me crazy, but I kind of want to call people out. Speak, you know, first being Dana. Dana, I'm sorry, but I'm constantly making fun of you. Um, <laughs> so you just write this down. You can try to get me back. When girls wear scarves and they're literally a blanket just wrapped around your just, neck. Dana's worn some stuff where I'm like, oh, you're kidding me, right? Like you just took our bed sheet and wrapped it around your wrapped neck around. and went to work. You know what I'm saying? But like, it, had, it had like a print on it. Or women right? get away with so much yeah. absurdity when it comes yep. to the winter. Like they wear a... a I don't even know what it's called, like a shawl or a something. shawl, yeah. It's literally a blanket, a blanket. with cutouts. With cu- yes. Right? Yes. And I'm like, you get to sit at your desk all cozy. I'm wearing a suit, and if I de- deviate just slightest, I get yelled at. You get yelled at. Like, what's that outfit? Very very true. Right? Very true, 100%. All right, so. But I'm into women's fashion. You know? I know. I-, I would wear a blanket with, with uh, 
some arms in it too as well. Okay. Um, I know. I know. Wait, you probably have. So you are going to pop my Ranger cherry today. I am. <laughs> it's so weird when you put it like that. I I am ecstatic because we are going to the Ranger game. Good seats. Um, but you wait till you see the jacket that I have for tonight. Can you skate? Can I skate? Yeah. Uh, like a little bit. All right. You can skate. You're probably better like than Like ice me. skate, right? You're yeah. Saying? Yeah. I mean, I could like, you know, you're probably get by, but I, I can't really stop. I got to. The, fun, know, the funny thing is that my boss, my company, uh, they have season tickets. Every once in a while, I get the call. Hey, we can't go. Would you like to go? Always say yes. And I, I don't know hockey well. You don't know hockey well. Listen, I've only been to Manhattanville are, hockey. The seats are uh, disgustingly close. Where, <laughs> like, I will not go to any other hockey game unless these are the tickets. There we go. The first time I went, I went with my boss. and Oh, no, I went with Dana. And my boss was your like, boss. Yeah. That's your boss. Yeah, yeah. Dana, yeah. My second, my real boss. Mm-hmm. I went with my real boss, my work boss. Yeah. Um, and my real, my work boss was like, <laughs> my work boss was like, uh, yeah, you know, I hope you guys enjoy, like, it's a little high up, but like he was messing with me. Yeah. It's a little high up, but like you, you should enjoy yourself. Like hockey games are fun. <laughs> so we get there and I'm like, Dan, I don't know where the tickets are. Like I read them, but you yeah. know how the sections don't make sense. Yeah. Like sometimes they go lower and yeah. they're actually closer. So I look and I'm like, oh, 105 or something I'm like that. Sounds pretty close. Sounds close, <laughs> but I don't know. So we get there. We show the, um, what do they call those people that direct you? Uh, Usher. Ushers. Yeah. We go to the Usher. We're like, here's a ticket. Say a ticket taker. And the lady goes, oh, you keep keep on going, she said. And <laughs> she was like, keep on going. And Dana looks at me. I'm like, hmm, not bad. Then we get to the next level. It's like, you know, halfway or so. Oh, you guys got a long way to go. <laughs> next person. It's the same woman following us. Right, yeah. uh, so then we walk and I'm like, this isn't right. And we get all the way down to like maybe four rows back. And literally the goalie, it like the puck's coming so fast. I'm like, yeah, oh, yeah, oh. Yeah. and I don't know. I've never been to a hockey game. First game ever with Dana. And I had so much fun just because it's like being. Have you been to like a really good soccer game? I've never been. To I've one. never been. I would imagine when the whole stadium is into something. No matter if they're watching it, they know what the hell's going on, but they know when to yell. Yep. Does that make sense? Yep. Like a missed goalie, a missed shot on goal. Oh, <laughs> yeah. everyone, right? It's just, it's a blast. So I, can't wait. I need to, um, I, 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 I don't know if I'm going to do a little research before the do game. Do a little research. I'm going to really act like I'm into this. You know, I'm going to really, the I'm going to really get into we're in, this. Those people are they know season tickets. And if they're not, their friends are like us. So let's hope that other people other, gave their tickets. Right. And now, Wait till you see the jacket I'm gonna wear. I, I picked it out for you. I was gonna go full mink. Is it mink? I was gonna go full mink, but I went with the leather with the mink neck. Uh, so y- you'll enjoy that too. It's it, it's a uh, r- Russian mob esque, if you will. Oh, we gotta take a picture, <laughs> and I gotta send it to John so that he sees because uh, you were the topic of discussion at our wedding. He's like, I love like everyone in your family. So, like, who's the big guy? <laughs> like, he was aggressively. Guy, wait, didn't I rip your rip my shirt? You too? ripped your jacket in front of him. Yeah, yeah. we returned yeah. it too. Yeah, yeah, I remember. don't say we. No, no, I, I did it with you actually. No, I just yeah, yeah. deposit. We got it back. We're <laughs> yeah. good. There was blood on. Um, Matt Pierre had a bloody nose. So yeah, it said blood all yeah, over. Yeah, what, what a wedding! Man. It looked like we got in a bar fight. Yeah, it did. we handed it, it did. back. I, we probably did. I don't know. But anyway, are you excited? Dude, Talk to me. No, I'm I'm excited, man. I I I'm very ignorant to to hockey. I I've been to Manhattanville hockey games. Shout out CV, former Manhattanville Valiant hockey player. Did really, you know that? I didn't know that. Oh, you're lying? <laughs> oh, that was pretty good. <laughs> that was good, though, right? Like, what? This right? guy's multi-talented. He did play soccer, right? You played soccer. Did you play lacrosse, too, or no? I don't no. know what to believe anymore. No, seriously. But mouth. he he's he's actually a good hockey player. Like, he can skate. I'm dead serious, Can you right? skate? Seriously. I'm so bad at skating that I avoided that. Day. I've said it on the podcast, I think. I've avoided, I avoided that date for, like, four years when I started dating Dana. A skating date? Yeah, like, her father ran a skate rink. My father Oh, that's right, that's right. So every time she'd be like, let's go skating, let's go that. I'm like, no, how about we go, like, have a really nice dinner? <laughs> like, I'd have to upsell her to get out See, of See, I got lucky. Karina wouldn't even want to go skating. And then when they- Too cold for her. Yeah. And then when they got me on the on skates, they videotaped me the whole time, and they were calling me Bambi. Bambi. <laughs> Bambi. What? I, you- I, we can get the video. I can get the video <laughs> from Chris or Billy. One of them has it. They brought me to Bear Mountain Oof. during the height of the season. So we got these all these little kids whipping past me. On a real lake now. Move out of the way. So Is this po- on a real lake? No, no, no. Oh. It's a, it's a rink, but oh. it's like near, near a mountain. It was packed. I'm terrified of killing a little kid falling on him. <laughs> so I was doing this the whole time. <laughs> it was the least enjoyable date I've ever been on. 
and everyone else had the best time ever because wow. they watched me freaking out for two hours. <laughs> oh, my God. That's good. I, I want to see it. And so I get nervous. I live on Mohegan Lake up in Yorktown, right? Beautiful lake. As soon as it freezes over, everybody and their mother from the neighborhood, they set up the ice skating Sick. rink and, you know, they have a hockey game going on. Last year, I kid you not, and I've never seen this. You know the heating lamps? Yeah. Right? They it's got a one on? strong base. Oh, it's not like a heated base, but yeah. the, the top is yeah, a it's up here. Correct. Like you see it at the bars and stuff. Yep. They put that on the ice and were sitting under it. The parents were sitting around it. Ballsy. Right? Is that not ridiculous? I've never seen something like that. That's something we would do, and then we'd fall into lake and die. Right. But yeah. now, it, it's like they're not even worried about it, though. Uh, there's got to be signs behind it. You know, there's a certain I mean, how thick is yeah, the, the ice, ice and how do so you know thick. to then bring a heating lamp on the thing? So the heating lamp isn't going to heat the ice and then melt you all. If you're listening now and you know the answer to this question, I'm very interested. No, since <sighs> podcast, <has you> know. <laughs> I believe you need to have about three inches of ice and with three inches of ice. That's it. You can. Yeah, it's three ice, inches. I mean, that's, you know, I think so. three inches is big. What are you I'll, talking about, Mike? Yes. <laughs> I know three inches if I've ever seen it. All right. That's three inches. <laughs> but you can put like good weight on like a car, like a lot of weight. Really? Yeah. Three inches. Wow. Yeah, no, I guess if you took a pickaxe, it'd be oh, very difficult. Oh, this was even to... crazier. I saw a mom and dad, and they were pulling on a sled their baby on the ice while they were skating. Uh, I mean. Nah, man. Uh, their baby was in the sled. If you're a good skater, then maybe. But, but like, the, oh, never. you're on water. You're going to melt. You're going to melt. <laughs> well, if it's freezing. <laughs> I, I was I never a winter sports guy. Were you? No. Like, did you like winter acti- Winter? Winter? Well, winter basketball activities? is a winter sport, but I mean. No, no, indoors. outside. No, 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 no. Yeah. No. Like you snow, like sledding. Was nah. Bad. Oh no, I did. I, I snowboarding was. I was went fun. snowboarding on like uh, you know, one of one of the hood mountains in Mount Vernon. Hood Mountain, yeah. Hood <laughs> Mountain. I've been to Hood Mountain. <laughs> it was, it was a, a school, Pennington Grimes Elementary School, actually, mm-hmm. and uh, they had a nice little hill. It was very steep back in the day. I want, I would like to go back. It's probably like see fourteen it. exactly. Feet tall. So I busted my chin wide open. Yes. Yeah, I never never snowboarded again. There's too much. This late in life, it's <laughs> it's too risky. Yeah, I'm not us. doing that. Yeah. I agree. I hurt myself playing softball. Two years later, I still have a toe injury. Yeah, a twinge. A twinge in my toe. Um, I wish Satchel Sanchez was here because there's two things that I need to discuss. And I and I kind of want your feedback. You guys are 30, 40 somethings, right? Yeah. Most of our listeners, almost like 70% of them, fall in the range of like 24 to 46. I would think it'd be more like we have 60 year olds listening to us. <laughs> well, we do. There's a couple of them. Okay. Yeah, a couple of them. Um I've heard two words now that I really I'm not I thought I was up on my uh my lingo, my my hood lingo, if you will. Okay. Right. So there's two words that I want to propose to you guys and see if you've ever heard them. Let me guess the words. Go ahead. Right? Yeah. I think you posted about it. But I, I one of them I did. Simp? Okay. Simp is one. Yeah. I've heard Shout that. out Janine. Jan- All right. Janine is with the times, if you will. She's uh, very trendy. Super simp. So, so trendy. Tagging what? me and stuff. <laughs> telling me it's worth it to meal prep. You, uh, you think I missed it? <laughs> yeah. She asked me, actually. She was like, hey, did Mike see that? I I'm- see it all. <laughs> I just don't respond sometimes because I wait. I put it in the holster and then I'm ready next time I and see now, it. And now, Janine, so shout out to you. But now you're you're under some pressure here from Mr. Pirelli. I'll do a competition against Janine. <laughs> we'll, do a, we'll do some type of competition. So the term simp. CV, you heard this thing? No, never. No. All right. What, 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 I've Mike. heard it. I've heard it in the sense of like I'm simping over something, right? Can you um Webster dict? Oh, it's not Webster. Uh, Urban Dictionary. Urban Dictionary. Yeah. Urban Dictionary the term. It's like simp. Urban Twitter. My and favorite. then of course, you know, I'm saying it wrong. I'm walking around saying you're so simpy. You're so simpy. And she's like, dude, it's not simpy. simpy. <laughs> it's not simps. It's Renan simp. Simp. You're being a simp. Somebody who like cares Needy, extremely right? for something. Yeah. I, I thought it was something with like simple. You've been simple. That's I what know. I thought. That I was my assumption. But simple. I don't know. I can't keep up with it. But she said it's so casual. CV is back on the mic. I'm, Let's hear the. I'm back with the ho- the homie. I use homie all the time now because of, homie? Uh, Coach T started saying it to me. And oh, I was like, that's hilarious. I'm, I'm going to start saying homie to people. Mate. So I like people I work with. I'm like, what's up, homie? What's up, homie? <laughs> Um. All right. I'm going to simp. I'm going to read this. I, don't, I still don't understand. PG. It. PG. Yeah, yeah. Simp. Someone who does way too much for a person they like. See, see, so someone who like Me, cares extra. It has a sentence. I was the want. opposite. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Give me the sentence. So give it's the bad. Sentence. It's bad connotation. Brian shoe the simp. Shoe the simp. <laughs> shoe the simp. Wait, 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 wait. Brian shoe shoe like S H U. What? I bought her a car and a whole ass house, and <laughs> we're not even dating. <laughs> <laughs> I love Bro, Urban Dick. I am Nathan, we not even dating. 
You a simp. <laughs> <laughs> Nathan the pimp, you a simp. Yo, I still don't understand it, Who though. Who writes these, I'm by the dead way? serious. I got that st- job. I'm dead serious. I still don't understand this term. Simp is you're just needy. You're, I, simp. All right, you're a simp. I, I guess, but I thought it was like you're- You're a stage five. You're oh caring. God, right, right. Stage five clinger? Similar. Yes. <laughs> Are clinger? you ready for the second um, Yeah, yeah. Give me, give me some. Do you watch Double Shot Love? Mm, not consistently. I got to make a quick comment. Double Shot Love, uh, I forget the woman's name. The w- girl who ended up with Pauly D was the biggest simp for Pauly D. The but, chick that he's with right now? Yeah, what's her name? Do you know? Uh, no. I mean, she's beautiful, whatever. She basically staged five her way into his life. He was having none of it. Didn't choose her, but she refused to lose. And she simped her way right and in? And every time we watch the second season with Vinny and they're together, I'm like, this girl changed my life. Like, anything's possible. <laughs> Just get- Go get her. Yeah. Sorry. Okay, you ready for the next one? Yeah, yeah. Simp. A man who puts the hoes before the bros. Mm. Ooh. Ben, well ben is a major simp for ditching us th- for those hoes. <laughs> wow. So that's why everyone's Janine had was, has probably been simpy at one. Well, point. so Janine was calling me a simp the other day. And About I, what? what were you doing? I didn't appreciate it. I don't know. I did something and I think I made a comment to my wife and she was like, dude, you're such a simp. And Does I'm that like, drive you nuts that what? Janine's like this sounding board and she's not on your side? <laughs> well, sometimes she is and then sometimes she isn't. So like, okay. it was funny though. The, does she uh, back you up on some things? Sometimes she she's, does. You basically have a referee with yeah, you, correct? At certain times, all times, all times, all times. Okay. We got a group chat. We got a group. We got a group chat. Yeah, we got a group chat. I was texting both of them the other day, and I'm like, you know what? Have Stop. you started I need paying your her together. to be on your side? Because that's what I would do. I would say, listen, Smart. legally, this isn't illegal. Get, so I will give you hundred dollars a month if you disagree <laughs> with me. Let's get her on the payroll. Get her on the payroll. Think about how much. That's important to win arguments. Right. But I'll be like, Janine, is that true? Yeah. She'll be like, yes. And you're like, <laughs> come on, Janine. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. And then what was the second one? The second one was from Justin Anthony Sanchez. He told me. Uh, cap? What? Cap confused no, the hell cap, out of me. No cap? Cap. No cap. I get no cap. Confused the no hell cap. out of me. I get no, that. No cap means no lie. Yeah, like, you know, no no BS. Right. No, yeah, but what does cap mean? Like, no no capping. No capital expenditures? Like, what, <laughs> what is it short for? <laughs> I, I There you go. Good. So there's another one. But this one was Poonies. <laughs> Right, I've never heard that yeah, one. That's what I'm saying. Never right, heard. but CVM is that maybe it's a good thing. I've never heard that. Yeah, I, I did. I did not know what it was. <laughs> so I need to now know what the definition of is it poonies or poony? Dave, when it's poons. When, oh, poons, <laughs> poons. Okay, so poons. It and sounds then, like a word you would I mean, say, but just made up. Right, and he was like, "Yo, that's so poons," and I'm like, "What?" I mean, this one doesn't really need Punitive? too much of an explanation. I don't even know if I want to read the. Uh, <laughs> I I is it short for soft uh, punani? Yes, a female's genital organ. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> now that one at least makes sense. When I said I'm trying to improve my English, I didn't mean this. <laughs> you didn't English. mean this. You meant no. like a Korean slang English. term for wimp, often used by teenage <laughs> oh. males who want to boost their masculinity. Maybe well, a wimp is sense. a simp. That, like wimp, simp. right? I, I that when I heard wimp for I, her, simp. for she, simp. Yeah. So like Justin know. was so casual with this, like he's like, "Yo, that's poons, boy," and I'm like, yeah. "What?" We 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 had and we and still I have turned it to some. Dumb Would you like the sentence? Though. Like think about some, mad. Yeah, oh, it's like a thing. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Do you I say sentence. mad anymore? No. What is one thing you look back and you're like, I can't believe I said that. Mad's uh, pretty good one. Mad is pretty good. Um, I oh everything used to be O D. Oh, That's yeah, O-D. The, the abbreviations. Yes, yeah. O-D. But that, that makes sense, O-D. overdoing it, right? Like, the ponies, oh, I don't, it sounds like a, you know, the TV show. And and simps, I don't really know. You know, give us a sentence for um for the poons. I mean, that's pretty easy. <laughs> <laughs> Put in a sentence, Dave is a poons. <laughs> yeah. This is a two-part thing, okay? So, it's <laughs> Alex and Nick. So, David, you're going to be Alex. Okay. And, you uh, should have just changed it to David Mike. <laughs> and Mike, you're going to be Nick. Okay. I like that. Alex. Name. We probably shouldn't go rock climbing. It could be dangerous. Nick, dude, it's fine. Don't be such a poon. <laughs> <laughs> that was that's, actually pretty okay. Good that's one. pretty good. All right, so now, that was one of the questions. Was yeah, it, what yeah, do these right. terms mean? <laughs> no. So this this is now the second thing that like I remember being like, wow, I really thought I was up on my my game. What are you your know? thoughts on slang? Because I have a thought. I have a thesis. I'm in. I like it. I All like you're slang. in. My thesis: you got to create your own, so then people feel dumb when they talk to you. Right. Flip the power dynamic. Yeah. Well, I get roasted almost every episode. Bye. You do it. You do it in the episode. I ignore when the I roast. say something. No, no. When I say something. Oh, yeah. And you're like, Karina thanked me, by the way. You'll Remember be like, what? Yes. She, she was so like, thank the, you for doing the that. other day. 
I was watching an episode of ours and I said, like, you know, if you got value from this, God bless you. <laughs> and then like, like I remember you in the episode were like, God bless you. Forget like, you. Right. You were like, God bless you, and you start laughing. So Karina hears it the other day and she's like, dude, what language do you speak? Yeah. Like, nobody sneezed. There's no there's no prayer for anybody. I give like, you what credit, are you doing? though, because you deliver it with confidence, right. which is half the battle. There you go. Because <laughs> you'll say stuff to people and be like, is that? Uh, sure. <laughs> sure. That works. I'm, I'm with it. You know? So, yes, I consistently get heat because for those of you that didn't know, my wife is a uh, high school English teacher. <laughs> which is so, hilarious. Right? <laughs> so we're just butchering the English yes. language professionally. There you go. has to listen to At us. At least we're suited and booted, so it looks good. We present it. Um, oh, there was one other lighthearted thing. Before we really jump into the epi here, my baby sister, who is a grown woman now, happy birthday to Danielle Regina, 26 years old. You are beautiful and I love you. And listen, anybody that is lucky enough to take you on this date for your birthday, you better open the door for her. Does she have a birthday date? You better. I, listen, I don't know. You better pay the bill. Is she single? Are we doing a dating show? Yes, yeah, dating show. Perfect. Right. Si si Sorry. Sign up. Go ahead. You better pay the bill. All right. And if I hear any negativity, I'm reporting back to her other bully brother, Matthew Regina, to give you pow pow. Give you pow pow. <laughs> <laughs> another language thing. That I'll right. Another, another language thing. So, no, all jokes aside, happy birthday. Happy uh, birthday, 26 Danielle. years old. Isn't that nuts? It's pretty wild. Right. I, when people ask me, how old are you? And I, I have to think about it for a second. Then I say, oh, like 31. I'm like, oh, shit, I'm 31. Like I was fighting with my wife. I didn't know how old I was. Yeah. I thought she was 34 and I was 33 and she's like, no, that's, that's not right. And I'm like, yeah, it is. But no, it's not. I think it's weird how we measure time in like it just it's it does. Like, I think it should be life experiences mm. should be your age. Mm. It's like, I feel oh, I got beat up this year. I aged four years. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. I joke with I'd be I'd be much older. Yes. I, I joke with people. I think this year felt like like four years. Four These years. past two years have felt like 10. No. Yeah. No, yeah. Especially with the babies. Do oh, I'm struggling. It's tough. Livy <sighs> did not sleep. So we got our second vaccine shot or booster uh, Friday, Friday, which was a great idea while we had pa family parties the next day. So I was <laughs> shot for those. Literally then shot Sunday night, Sunday or Monday. Livy did not sleep at all. She was up every hour. She's teething again. How many teeth do these kids freaking have? That's the thing. Yeah. Now my daughter's teething in the middle of the night. Now she's getting a rash on her neck because the drool. It's. Ugh. Ugh. I mean, I feel bad and for them. Don't very cranky. Wrong. But the godsend of babysitter slash mother-in-law. She took the baby last night. Dana slept from like 8 p.m. until about 8 a.m. A sloth. Put on will. a show. <laughs> I could for some reason I just can't go to bed at eight. I told you like I'm here. Yeah, the head. yeah, that's right. I sat in bed and I watched uh, Curse of Oak Island for about two hours. Great book. I don't Great know movie. what I don't know Great what that is. You need to watch both of you. Wentworth, is it good? Oh my! It Isn't is that a about female the CIA and stuff. No females that are locked up in prison. Oh Wentworth, yes. But it is the the storyline behind it. There's Do eight they escape seasons from too. jail. Uh no, because that's really. the only I mean, a, jail a show couple, I like. Is a couple when people uh, like, escape. They do, but then they, you know, like it's, oh. it, it's, and they have a governor okay. instead of a um, what's the like a warden or something yeah, like that. Yeah, warden. Um, I forget where they're located. Somewhere where they have accents. Um, okay. Okay. <laughs> I think in Britain maybe that narrows it down. Yeah, yeah, somewhere in England. <laughs> yeah, Wentworth uh, sounds like a British. Show. Yeah, something like that. But um, I mean the acting is phenomenal there's eight seasons so i like that like i dove into sons of anarchy and eight there's seven seasons? seasons or something like that same thing with sopranos i didn't watch it till like a couple years ago but now it's all there for me so now i try to get in like one episode a day but i can't even do that because it's i fall asleep yeah you know it's tough do you um, rewatch or do you just move on no i keep moving but yeah, now now we're having a competition my wife is like you're the worst television watcher in the world you're pretty right? bad pretty bad so i'm already now on season three in like Two or three weeks because I was sick. So I laid up and I watched six episodes in one day. It was phenomenal. But anyway, my wife started from zero. She's like, I'm going to catch you in like five days. <laughs> yeah. It's funny. So how now it's like a skill. Yeah. Yeah. I'm but she, she's she's on another level. She has Netflix on the phone while she's showering, while she's cooking. She just she likes it and yeah. she can listen to it and not exactly have to watch it. Whereas I got to really watch it. My problem is I watch things and I think of other things. And then I, I'm like, wait, when did that happen? Yeah. You, you know? Uh, yep. But yep. super, super good show. I've Wentworth. had an epiphany. Uh oh. Keep your shows about reality. I'm going all sci-fi from now on. I watched Wheel of Time. My brain was exploding <laughs> with these like these spells and stuff. I was like, "What is going Wait, on?" Makes you think we just live in a sucky world. Imagine if that was our world. Uh, that world's world scary because people ah. have like magic tricks and like. 
They lift people up without their hands. It's an absurd show. Imagine. But Dana was making fun of me because um, I was saying how I like that stuff and she doesn't like it. So I, I love when she falls asleep and I can just throw that on. Yep. Um, I don't know. I don't know what it is. I love the sci-fi. I love Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, all that stuff. I didn't like none of that. I know. Yeah, like I hate it. Like I like mob. You like Star Wars? I like mob. Yeah, I love Star Wars. Oof. But I was a late Ninjas? bloomer. Ninja with Turtles. Sci-fi. I never watched it originally. Turtles. I like the turtles, not the new ones. The new ones, I because the originals are so. They're good. new ones. Yeah, there's new ones, and they're are they like CGI. Are they like bigger? They're jacked. They're like can you I, now. Can I be a ninja? You you probably you probably yeah. be a ninja turtle now with that build. See, like if you fast. sign me up for a movie, then I'll become like a good actor. But I don't want to watch it. Would you be in, if someone asked you to be in a movie? Would you be in a movie? Yeah, absolutely. I don't know if I would no, be. no, don't do that. No, no, don't sign me up for for an acting film. Don't, what no. would your role be? What would you have to be? Would oh. you want to be the hero? You know, no, no, no. I'd but like you know who I would love to be uh, as an actor. Let me think. Let me think. Uh, very easy, very G easy. Unit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> wait, let me think. Well, again. Power would be a good movie. I know. I'd, I'd, I thought, I'd like you. to be in that. Oh, Pretty close Ghost, to that. Whatever the guy's name is, you'd Ghost. Be him. I like Ghost. I I think you would want to be like a mobster of some sort. Ray Donovan. Okay, that's. I would have been on that. I'm yeah, on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ray, Ray Donovan for sure. Yeah, he's got a good style too. Wear suits, right? No tie. Uh, <laughs> I like that show. That was a good show. But my argument again, after a first season, I don't need to watch it. I know what's going to happen. It's, it's the yeah. same story. It's like watching CSI yep. over and over. It's the same thing. True. You know. Yeah, I got you. All right. Cows is old. I know man. it's it's tough. God you got to bite damn. them after the shower though. Um, no snooze recommendation. Sure. Is that where we're at? Let's do it. Uh, did we even talk pod bod? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I'm jacked. What else do you want now? <laughs> Listen, I'm on a roll. Are you? Yeah, like I am. You're butter. I'm butter. The problem being, uh, Thanksgiving, because of the shot, I was three days down. Like, I didn't work out. I three thought days you were going to say it was 300 something. <laughs> no, <laughs> because of the I shot, three you know, I shot up <laughs> three bills. Um, but I, I have my routine down. The air fryer is still cooking away. Your your thoughts on steak make so much sense now. <sighs> So much more efficient to get 50 grams of protein with a little At top least, sirloin. Right? I know. A little $7 top right? sirloin. Um, you know, I got the chicken still rocking and rolling. I got the veggies. I got the rice. I'm I'm good to go. I'm waiting for the eggs in a bag. That's what I'm waiting eggs for. Eggs in a bag. I drink mag white still. They're See, that, still that, my... that makes me gaggy. It's so much easier. It's nah, like but milk. It's just, I, the big, uh, the only thing I, I, will, I blend it in a nice shake. That's only, different. I like hair squatting too. That's You're different. showing me the way with your, your squats and your. But so I've squatted. I only squat once a week. Right, I love squatting, now. but I I front squat, but I'm not good because my back, my lower back from like sitting down all day has not been good. So if, for the past couple of years, I've I well, let's let's hit this head on. Let's I front, fix that lower back. It's big tough, boy. man. I have um. Uh, do you want me to step on your back? I forget what it's called. No, I went to a chiropractor. Don't so be was, doing that. Don't I was do born that with. Um, Don't do that. Did you know this? Fun fact: I was born with scoliosis. No, you weren't. Yes, I was. Do you, do you have all the uh, ailments? Oh, listen, that's why Tate Virginia is. I'm here now. Yeah, I'm, I'm impressed. Here. I've had to come back, but it was, it's not terrible. But it, scoliosis is basically you don't have a straight spine, yeah. right? So I have a, I have a, a curvature, curvature in the spine, which isn't isn't exactly healthy. Does but that accentuate your back now? Yeah, it makes makes, you know, make, makes me look a little full. bit bigger. But I have um, I forget what it's what the terminology is. But for, for years, I went us uh, not slip disc, uh, merged. It's oh, another fused, word, fused. fused. Yes, yep, I know. Of it. So he literally, this is no joke. This is about five years ago. I go to the chiropractor because it was really getting bad. Now this is when I was you know still doing some performance athletic training. Um, but you know I'm doing all these Olympic style lifts, but my back was really killing me. Mm-hmm. So I went to the chiropractor. Uh, actually took on a program at with the chiropractor. I was going four times a week for like three months, wow. then three times a week, then two times a week. Then I sustained one time a week for years. Yeah. Um, then it then it definitely got better. But he when he first did my back scan, right, prior to to doing the work, he said that I had the back of a sixty five year old. Really? Yeah. Through just through the um uh what is it called? Like the the um what are the tests called that they do? Uh, MRI. 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 Uh, yeah, I, X-ray. X-rays. Yes, yeah, yeah. X-rays. Um, so when he looked at it, and then he was explaining the the. Um, Can you stop doing that motion. Yeah, 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 I mean, the, we get it. Slip. We understand. <laughs> I mean, what what is it called? Not not merged. Uh, fused. Fused. Yes. God damn it! You fused. want me to talk for you too? Fused, fused together. Yes. Uh, yeah. So that's that's interesting. Fun fact. So so from there, that's when I really picked up front squatting mm-hmm. because the load is I've not exactly on the back, right? So it it doesn't it, make you want to fall forward though. Well, you, I mean, you start light, like you, you start like with the here? bar. Yeah, I put it on. You got to have big traps, though. You know, I got, I'm jacked. You know, so you got to you got to lay it on the neck. Uh, but oh, I that's really why don't, the hoodies are great because I have the nice. hood to rest the bar. Yeah, that's good. That's so good. I don't get yeah, the back don't do house. a pad. Don't do a pad. If you no, that's don't. why I have a hoodie. It's basically a pad. That's true. Uh, but yeah, I really don't go over body weight. I mean, I'll, I'll put on two twenty five and I do it for reps, mm-hmm. uh, just to sustain. You get deep. I'm impressed how deep you get. 
the that's the front squat. My back squat is not great because maybe it, we should coordinate and I should be like, hey, Dave, I'm going to start doing this workout. Don't do it because when <laughs> you do it, mine looks terrible. No, but you back squat. Front squatting actually helps your back squat. Okay. But remember, I was doing this with athletes. So I was taking yeah. 6'10". I'm not an athlete, David. 6'10 dudes and trying to get them in yeah. the pocket is tough. What's Way the to, pocket? Past they, 90? Past, well, in the pocket is really nice. There's really no need I got, to go below 90. Fernando, you remember Fernando? Yes. Jesus. He said, he sent me a thing that you're not supposed to go past 90. I was just going to say. Where, there's really no need to go. I don't know go. who to believe. That's the problem. So when it comes to, ath- it depends what you're going for. Yeah. Athletic function, right? And if you're looking to, um, I guess the word would be longevity. Okay. There is zero need to be going below 90 degrees on a squat. Really? Yes. There's no increased level of testosterone that's shooting through your butt when, when, you, you, get when you get lower. Okay. Um, you already hit that threshold right before 90, actually. When you go on below 90, uh, yep. when you actually go below 90 and you push through your heels, you're, there's a point that you're actually putting pressure back on the knees to uh, get back yeah, to 90. because it's like a release of tension. Right. Uh-huh. So really, when you're squatting, doesn't matter if you're front squatting or back squatting, Putting that, that's why if you put a bench there and you do box squats yeah. or whatever with a with a bench or something like you're doing, that's that's the best way to do it. It because it you kills the, the momentum too. Yes. Because and then it's momentum's stopping not you. friendly, right? Unless you're trying to do a lot of weight, then momentum helps. Right. It, it all depends on what you're looking cool. yeah, what you're looking to do. I mean, like cross uh, crossfit and stuff, sometimes they go literally to the I watch some people yeah, squat. They, they, they touch they, their ankles. It's crazy. It's ridiculous. Great it flexibility. Looks, looks great for flexibility if you have that. If you're not there and you try that, you're gonna get hurt. Yeah, yeah. That's me. I'm gonna get hurt. <laughs> you know? Uh but no squat squatting in itself is one of the best exercises best compound movements you could do. The other question when you do I put two weights under my feet every once in a while to yeah, help on your heels. On the heels. That's that's great Frankie, move. Frankie, you know, brother Frank. Great move. Uh I saw him do it and I asked him like what's the deal with that? And he's like it helps with your ankle flexibility, well, right? Well, it helps with that, but it also keeps you off of your toes, believe it or not, cuz a lot of people when they squat, out. a lot of people when they squat, they put the pressure on their toes, yeah. and when you squat, your knees should never go past your toes. Can you tell the Does people why squatting is so important about like t- testosterone and just your overall workouts? Because well, I never incorporated it, yes. and right now by doing it, I feel so, like I'm, I'm, I feel like I had seventy five percent of the pie. Yep. And now that I'm squatting, I feel like I'm getting 100. right. So the simple, the most simple form. I don't want to get too technical. Yeah, very simple. Keep it simple. Simple. One, <laughs> keep it simple. One, squatting is the best compound movement that you could possibly do, besides like a bench press and a deadlift. But it's even better than a bench press because you don't have to use your entire body. Squatting not only enhances your flexibility, um, your core strength is incredible when it comes to squatting. And the best way to actually do it is to keep your core tight while you squat. Um, Your hips, as you get older, your hips get very, very tight. Squatting mm-hmm. loosens up the hips. Um, you got to be careful with the load that you're putting on. But just the form of even air squats, right, for individuals that work at a desk all day, one of the best things you could do because it naturally increases your testosterone in your body. Mm. The movement of an actual squat produces testosterone. Not many movements do that. And apparently testosterone helps with hair, everything. Muscles. Muscles. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, the st- bat- one of the steroids of the world is, is testosterone. testosterone. Testy. Right. Um, okay, I love it. So does that I mean does that make Perfect. sense on a that's simple perfect. level? Perfect. Because okay. that's again, I'm trying to get more simple with everything. Mm-hmm. And I know I know my squats aren't great, but I know I need to be able to do them consistently yep. to have the longevity and the uh overall health yep. for now and the future. The realization I came too late in life, not too late, is I need to live this is a vehicle to do everything that I want to do up here. Yeah. It's just a vehicle. So I got to put friggin' spinners on this baby. There you go. So I can get <laughs> invest, so can, invest in the best. So I can get to where I'm going. Yep. And if this breaks down, health is everything. Correct. This breaks down, then all this is worth nothing. There you go. Right. Very uh, good. Not 100% well, no, no. True, I got you. You know what I mean. Um, but then on the flip side, right? Like if you're in a if you're looking to body build now, then you should be squatting up to three times a week. Me, that's not what I'm going for. Yeah. Right. Like you, I don't think you're trying to. I don't know where I'm somewhere in like I want to look like I am a fitness athlete of some sort. Like I want to look <laughs> like I'm good at a sport, but not actually good no. at a sport. Okay. You know what I'm saying? All right. Like if you saw me, you're like, wow, that guy's ripped. Like maybe do you think, he plays soccer. Do you think we can go to the hockey game and I can convince somebody that I'm a hockey player? No. No. I, I don't, don't think, think so. so because no. you're just right. uh pro no take no offenses. <laughs> Prototypically, you just don't make sense on a hockey. <laughs> like, because um, even if you're a goalie, you're too tall, uh, where like they would just shoot under you. You know what I mean? 
<laughs> I, I'm gonna, that's going to be my goal. I'm going to try to convince somebody. I think you have a better shot telling people you're Russian and you're you're over here because you're defending <laughs> I'm a hockey player. Or I'm recording a show. It's it's based off of Ray Donovan's life. Yes. But, you know, this yeah. is, but you're the real yes, Ray Donovan. Exactly. Yeah, something like that I think is way more believable. <laughs> the only other note with the pod bod update is I've been – I've been keeping kind of my core stuff, right? Like, so my coffee in the morning, I still have my co collagen peptide in it. Um, but instead of using, I used to use Khalifa creamer. I was investigating. I'm like, you know what? Milk, like, is a good ratio of protein, right? Like, Milk is great. If I, I mean, put we'll 30 with calories, I this can't. is a really small tweak, but if I put 30 calories of a uh, Khalifa creamer, there is maybe one gram of protein in that, right? Whatever it is. So if I get, like, chocolate milk, but I get the reduced fat Fair Life, for example, organic, it's a one to one. So if you put 10 calories, you get one gram of protein yep. so that three or four now becomes four grams of protein. So I'm doing little things that don't really affect the taste. If anything, make it better. Yep. But put make me more efficient as far as my diet. Fairlife is good, too, because we have been buying that milk for for Cali, but they have a lactose free. But oh, it's still they? real milk, uh -huh. which is good because for years I couldn't drink milk. Yeah, because you're. Yeah. Fairlife's delicious. Have you tried the oh, chocolate? So good. I love to trust. So good. A lot of people don't know this. I used to have dreams when I was little about chocolate milk, and I would reach and do this, and it wouldn't be there, and I'd wake up crying. Wow. That's how much I like chocolate wow. milk. Wow. Um, Pat Scanlon. Chocolate milk guy? Manhattanville men's basketball. We used to do peanut butter and yellies on the bus. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which still makes you fun. two packs of, you know, the Horizon milks. No, I don't know that. Horizon? Horizon is a- Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. The red? Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. The so they have, juice they have box. chocolate milk. Yeah, so you'd give us two of those, and Jeffrey would make peanut butter and yellies, and then the whole bus, we'd have that. Don't you feel like we've been lied to our whole life about, like, dieting and stuff? <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, what crazy. it actually what actually yep. matters. And people are still getting lied to, and I'm still getting lied to, <laughs> and sometimes I fall for it. Yep, yep. Still, and I know 100%. what's right, and I still fall for it. Perfect segue. No snooze recommendation. There you go, my Don't brother. fall for it. <laughs> Don't go fall. fast. <laughs> to fast. So part. today I am going to recommend something that actually CV spoke about on the last episode. If you haven't heard it, that was a great episode. So go back and listen yeah. to it. Um, the fast bars, right? I got put onto these through Prolon because Prolon, when you actually order through our code, uh, we can we can link that, right, CV? We'll link that up. Um, depending on when you order the Prolon, you actually get 20 fast bars for free. I don't mean to interrupt. Yep. No, no, go I ahead. Have to, I have to say this. Fine. When you posted you about Prolon, yep. and then you had yep. the Christmas tree in the background, I'm like, is my man giving away Christmas trees? <laughs> giving away Christmas. Well, fun fact about Prolon, too. We will be giving away a box of Prolon to a loyal listener. Nice. So when you see the post, you're going to have to like like a, a post here. You're going to have to go follow Prolon, yep. and then we're going to gift you with a box of Prolon. Beautiful. Right? Here. Big, so they call him Big Santa. So, CV, here you go. Um, this I'm not gonna lie, guys. Before I preface it here, th I picked a tough flavor. <laughs> so th this is the uh, nuts. You What's like the flavor? This one's delicious. You I'm like that one? Yeah. Nuts so and dark. Cocoa. This is nuts and That's dark cocoa. Would be your nickname <laughs> if you're a bar. <laughs> <laughs> but before we go there, let me tell you about the science of the fast bar, and very literally, what it means is they promote uh, intermittent fasting, which you know well. Love it. Intermittent fasting is a phenomenal style of dieting. Absolutely works for fat loss for sure. What the fast bar has been, uh, I guess, produced to do is this bar actually allows you to remain in your fast while you eat. Sorry. Yeah, was oh. it? Oh, oh, oh wow. he got Jeez. so excited. I got so excited here. Knock the mic. Keep that in. So, <laughs> um, so it's an intermittent intermittent fasting bar that you can actually eat towards the end of your fast even though it's 200 calories the ingredients and the molecular um i guess structure of this allow your body to still think that you're in a fast is that not incredible it's incredible think about that yeah. seriously right like you're what actually do they call that mimicking mimicking mi effect right well prolon is a fast mimicking diet yeah i got it from you <laughs> because <laughs> you're because you're not actually fasting you're still consuming something so this is a way to get out right because i was researching something yep. about when you come out of a fast maybe you said it yep. you have to be careful what you eat right. because it can really uh ruin your previous results because your insulin or yep. some BS. So this you can actually consume while you're in the fast, mm -hmm. which is crazy because you, then you're able to- It's like to, a hack. To actually eat. So it is a hack. Now, I'll give you the uh, specifics here, but they do have five flavors. They have- <laughs> see, see, I'm hearing crunch. <laughs> see, he's crunch. Oh, That's how good it is. <laughs> Speaking of Janine, she texted me- um, How small are these She though? texted me yesterday and she was like, the chewing on the last episode was I, made me want to drive my car into the lake. <laughs> I have a I have a counter argument, Janine. <laughs> Mrs. I know it all. 
when I used to listen to Z100 growing up, and they used to have bagels in the morning. Do you remember they used to do that? Was that Elvis Duran yeah. in the morning show? Elvis Duran. The morning. I remember Catalina. Oh, okay, it's a boy. So, best voice. Best voice. I didn't Bermuda's. even know what she looks like. Best voice. Oh, Maybe don't... that's why you liked Regina. <laughs> there you <laughs> go, Regina. Karina, Karina. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> that's you. Um, <sighs> but when they used to do that, it made me so hungry because I heard them eating yep. the uh, the bagels, and you could hear the enjoyment when they were talking. They were. T- so I argue that gotcha. I'm sure some people said driving into a wall drove to their local <laughs> establishment and supported local. There you go. Good tie on that. Yeah. So, so kick rocks. I, I apologize on the flavor. It's it's decent. It's not bad. My wife hates it. But they have some good flavors that I've tried. Blueberry acai, Ooh. lemon berry, nuts and honey, <laughs> nuts and dark cacao. <laughs> And nuts and cacao. In their in their branding <laughs> meeting, they're like, "What should we name these bars?" And one guy was like, "Nuts and honey." <laughs> <laughs> uh, so they have it. Yep, those five flavors. Uh, Davy Deals. Woo! This is expensive, though. I'm not gonna lie. But just like you were saying, if you want to invest in in yourself, you got to invest Dave, in the best. You right? can't give them with it. This expensive can't lie. Listen, you got to just roll in from Davy listen, Deals. Let me hit them with the whoa. Hey, head to fastbar.com. Sign up for text alerts, and they'll give you a coupon for 20% off. Okay. Preface okay. that, now with the price. Okay. 20 bars for 58 bucks. With the discount, comes to about 46 bucks, or $2.30 a bar. So it's not terrible when you break it down. Let me ask you this. Yep. How much would you pay mm-hmm. to have a six-pack? <sighs> Just a, the I mean, drawer number, you know? <laughs> like tomorrow? Yeah. 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 I don't know. If you told me... 20 racks tomorrow if I had 20 stack, racks I would, I would. so this is a deal I, I saying, so this is the deal but literally if somebody told you tomorrow yeah what well, that's a good 20 number. racks you were no no you, you can pay, have, you'd pay not tw- even not let me let, pay- me let me let me uh, translate this because for the other people that don't speak Dave 20 racks is twenty thousand dollars right and that is aggressive no not just if for you, the six pack though listen you walked into the house with your shirt off you're like Karina look what I did she'd be like what do you mean what you did you're like I paid twenty thousand for these she'd be like what are you doing no so not only the six pack but if I can look at oh the body if I can if I can construct a body for- and. The, and then just have that it's immediately. Pretty it's pretty cheap. Twenty racks. Because I think we'd get a good return on it. Because mm-hmm. we I, we would do the show shirtless. Open it up. Taste taste Dude, the nuts. This isn't and- in my macros. It's a two hundred calories, five grams of protein. It's not. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Come on, bro. I'm, taste I support. It. But taste it. Taste it. You're Give trying it. to you're trying to sabotage. Wait me. till the Rangers game tonight. Dude, that's what speaking I'm trying of the, to do. All right, I'm so trying yeah, to hold out. That's a recommendation. But now, speaking of the Rangers game tonight, I sent you a picture this morning because you had me looking crazy, Uncle T. So. You look, know, look at this. You're ruining my diet. Yeah. <laughs> How is it? Pretty good. Not bad, right? But this is dark cacao. So hopefully the cacao is a little, you know, it's a little bitter. But I actually like the the more pungent something mm. is, and like the more bitter because I like dark coffee. It's rich. Yeah, if you it's like definitely dark rich. coffee. You like mm-hmm. it. Go ahead, try. So. Uh, hold on. Janine is going to love <laughs> <laughs> the chewing that's going on. As we're chewing. <laughs> I can hear it through the uh, headphones, Uh-oh. and it's pretty aggressive. Sorry, homie. All right. And speaking of Janine, she actually just texted my wife, and I don't know what it says, but uh, I love how you call her Jamine. She probably Jamine, said, "Stop that? chewing, oh, Michael." <laughs> Jamine, I don't call her that. <laughs> uh, the the <laughs> title of this episode is going to be Janine. That's all we spoke about. Um, no, so I'm in the gym today, right? I'm pre- I'm getting all excited. Last night, I'm like, "Babe, I'm going to the Rangers game." Like, you know, I gotta 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 have good like pregame, you know. So I'm like, "All right, Mike, like, uh, prepare us some uh, some vodka lemonades." So not, I had a, not any vodka, Tito's, Tito's, Tito's. So I had a nice little bottle of Uncle T, you know, and I slipped it in my gym bag. You know, by the time that I take my shower, a lot of stuff has come out of my gym bag now. Right. So now my gym bag is on the floor and I got Uncle T hanging out of my gym bag. Some guy comes by and he points and he's like, good for you. <laughs> and it's literally like 730 in the morning. I'm over here looking like an alky. Um, you know, so listen, if you got to if you got to hide it, you got to find a way to do it. Right. To that point, though, you, you uh, Batman, they say with great power comes respect, great responsibility. My response to him was like, you could probably tell those people in that gym <laughs> that this helps you retain protein well, or something. And they would. You know them. what I told them? Because I would. I said, listen, I'd be like, this man's a lunatic. I just saw him do 100 pull ups. <laughs> I'm, I'm starting to drink vodka. I literally told him, I said, dude, I do two things. I listen to the No Snooze podcast, go subscribe, and I drink Tito's in the morning. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> and he, he was like, oh, yeah. So it was, it was don't pretty- you think that if you saw like Bradley Martin or someone who's like the top of the top, oh, he's and they said, listen, I got a secret. Listen, you got to drink a shot of Tito's before <laughs> every rep. You know you'd be doing Before it. every rep. I would try. Or whatever, it. not rep. But Did you know Arnold 
he there was a um when it came close to like competition time, uh-huh. he would actually pound a six pack of beers to finish his carbs. So bowl it out to get to get to where he needed to with the carbs, right, like towards good. the end of the night. I knew me and him were so. <laughs> there you go. You remind now you you remind me of Lou Ferrigno. <laughs> mega hard dad, dad mega hard dad it's a mega. Great movie. If you've never seen pumping iron. pumping iron i've seen pumping iron so if you haven't seen it you're 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 behind one of the best movies of all time <laughs> we wanted to take a quick second to let you guys know that we partnered with our good friends over at orgain.com we're happy to offer our listeners 30 percent off by entering the code no snooze 30 again that's no snooze 30 for 30 percent off your first order If you're on the market for a new protein powder, nutritional shake, protein bar, or Mike's favorite, collagen peptides, Orgain is your one-stop shop. As all of you know, my Crohn's disease is currently in remission, and the only protein I use is from Orgain. My personal favorites are the chocolate peanut butter and the vanilla bean. With the code, you can try a two-pound tub for under $20. Talk about not snoozing. Go get yours today. Now, back to the epi. We have we're going to skip current events today because all of our events are current. We have taken questions, questions from the listeners for today's episode. Our loyal voice, Claudio, the voice, Valenzuela, will be reading them to us and we will be firing answers. How do you feel about that? I'm putting on my thinking cap. Oh, by the way, boys and girls club. Yeah. By the way, uh, we we should do a no snooze version of the uh, pom pom. The what? Mm. Of the pom pom. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this. Yeah. Do they have them? They have them. Speak, you saw pants. you saw the leggings. Yeah, when those come on, we're gonna drop. We're gonna drop. When they come on, I did some research because somebody hasn't been doing their research. I've been bad. <laughs> Is it unisex? <laughs> no, you're not wearing women's you're not unisex. They do have a men's. Um, I saw those, but they're white. They have a no. They're not. They you don't can, make my legs look up. You can. <laughs> I need a darker color. They make them look uh, chickeny. Too chickeny and no, pale. no. They do have dark colors. You just gotta. I'll, I'll school you. I'll show you how to work the webby. Can't wait to show off my <laughs> the <beach>. webby. Um, <laughs> special shout out Dom Palmer for the beanie. Uh, Mike Kelly Greenwich Real Estate is going to be doing a lot of stuff with the Boys and Girls Club of Greenwich. Shout out to the squad and our number one fan, Laura Palmer. Apparently listens every Saturday and Dom Palmer is sick of us. I think what we should do is bring her breakfast one morning and we should go have a podcast on her front porch. Uh, Don would, would kick us out. Before <laughs> would, would, she, would she enjoy that? He, I bet you Don would be pumped for that. Listen, let's do yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> it's offers on the table. <laughs> uh, CV, what do we got, my brother? All right. From Pablo P. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> I've always wanted to do that. No comment. How do you respond? Let me put this over here. How do you respond if someone close to you does something behind your back in business or in life? Mm. Ooh. This one is dark. I keep it moving. I actually, yeah, that's a, that's a good answer. Uh, yeah, next question. Um, <laughs> <laughs> is he speaking about no? How so screws you me? know what's weird? I actually just had a uh, I had an interaction, a business interaction that was odd, and it was an employee who I know has a um, a very good reputation, mm-hmm. great reputation with me personally on a personal level, great reputation at the job. Did something pretty wild, like, and it made me look really bad. Define Bec- wild. Oh uh, well, so here I'm gonna explain. So, you know, last week we did the uh, turkey giveaways that we were talking about, right? So we teamed up with Regeneron and they gave us bins, you know, plastic bins. They gave us a plastic bin for each family that we were delivering to. That's amazing. But it had every single thing you could think of. I mean, from all the way to to dessert. So from start to finish, everything was in this bin. On top of the bin was a $40 gift card to ShopRite. Nice. Right. So we now get down to the wire. There's eight bins left. And we had eight families coming to to pick this up. We see one of the staff members says, hey, we're missing a bin. I'm like, what do you mean we're missing a bin? Sure enough, though, we have cameras. I get upset when I have to go do this type of stuff because I'm like, I know I'm going to see something that's going to be disappointing. You trying to hit your protein? Goal. I was gonna say you see me screwing <laughs> yeah, off with the, now the one. Just I'm like, no, no, it's, I can't find it. I can't I find hit my the protein goal. Right. So long story short. You know, this male or female that I'm talking about, great reputation, ends up taking this damn bin without asking. Sure enough, when I spoke to him and my approach was very so it was it was odd because now I have the commissioner in with me. We're talking and we're like, listen, you know, we know something went missing. I don't want to go back and forth with hearing as to why you did it or whatever the reason is. But I need you to return this because I saw you and I played it for him on the TV. Got it. He was able to see it. So 
to answer this question with this individual had a really good reputation and made a mistake. Come to find out he was he thought it was extra. And I just said he so it was he he thought it was or she right or she. But he thought it was extra that was left over because it happened to be the day, a day later. He was delivering it to somebody that he knew that was in need. I knew immediately he wasn't taking it for himself. Yeah. But the fact that he didn't ask, it really looked bad once then I played it back and I saw. Is that the protocol? I would assume. Of course. I mean, yeah. it, just anything in life, right? Like if you're going to take something, you need to at least. No, ask. I don't know if like in the past. Made it even like worse. though. There's, there's an exit scrapping. door out the back and I see it go out the exit door to the parking lot into the car. So it looked super crazy. Yeah. But because he had a good reputation, I basically didn't even give him an opportunity to debate, which is odd for me cuz usually I was going to say I would assume that you would say like, "Hey, um, you know, I don't know if this is true, but I didn't want to set him up. Yeah. I didn't want to give him an the opportunity, opportunity to, to lie and screw himself over." That's good. Right? So like when it comes to to this question specifically, for me, I evaluated the grand scheme of things, right? One, what's the intention of this individual? How does this individ individual typically typically act? Um, you know, what is their reputation over a long period of time? If it's somebody you know that's that you just met, yeah, I'm probably not going to be on the same level with you. But I really gave him an opportunity to return it. And I knew the individual that he is, just him getting caught like that, that was going to eat him enough. I didn't have to even say anything yeah. about it. Um, and he was sitting there and he's like, listen, are there no repercussions? Like I said, honestly... I think the repercussions are right here. And I think they're within yourself. I think you're going to look at yourself and you're going to be embarrassed at what happened. You know, so no, there's no repercussions from me. Shocked, you know, and he was very thankful, obviously. But that was just an interaction that I had off of that. Interesting. So you so I guess the answer is you. Acknowledged it and then you just moved on from quickly because I because I knew this individual. If yep. I didn't know this, in, but but the question said close to you, right? Is it, it did say close to you? Yeah, but it, say, okay, say right. even yes, if they're yes. close to you, like there's been things that's happened in the past. I don't have like a specific example, but I remember thinking like, oh, but then you're just like, that's what it is. And I'm not going to take it personal, but just keep the ball rolling. You're very good at not taking things personal. I'm one that's like, I, I'm I'm ex extremely I'm loyal person. No, I, you're very I, good I at brushing it off. I take things personal like in the past. And then you just have a, you have a realization of like, I try to think of it of the other person. I'm like, if I'm their position, this happens. Yeah. I mean, it's possible that I would do something similar. So then you think of a place of less of like, wow, what a, you know, messed up move. Mm. But maybe there's something going. Yeah. I just try to give them the benefit of the doubt. Yes. But then I know going forward, yep. if it happens again, correct. It's a, you know, I think that's the answer. I think like now, if this individual take it with a grain of salt, but if it keeps happening, then exactly. You know, like, and you have to look at yourself, right? Like I, I have to look at myself and I make mistakes all the time. Yeah. You know, I, I do dumb things. I make dumb decisions and, you know, you, you have to really understand, is this a consistent mistake or are you making different mistakes, right? Like different mistakes are different. That's going to happen. You're not perfect in life. But with this one individual, now, if this same thing happens again, now it's a different conversation. But at first, I think the best way to operate is to be aware of what's going on. Really try to put yourself in that person's shoes. Understand they made a mistake. As long as it doesn't happen again, you move forward. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I think you give people the trust, and yep. then if they betray the trust, then you just adjust. Yeah, to make it even worse, right? There's one detail I left out. The individual that was running this program for us had to actually go out because there was no Get. access to the cameras. Had to go out and buy for this family, and then got it returned. So he, then he felt even worse, yeah, right? Yeah. So there were so many things that he was like, "Oh my god!" So I think that beat him up enough. Yeah, I don't know. It's a great thing. Good, though, good. That you guys yeah. do. Good, great thing. Good question, man. All right. From. Serena, what's the best piece of advice you've heard this year? Mm. My, Mikey, just do it. Yeah, I mean, so done. <laughs> my, my, someone, I don't know who said it, My done is better than your perfect. My done is better than your perfect. That's a great piece of advice. I love that. To get stuff done. Yeah. Because um, you could always be more perfect. but Yeah, that's true. A lot but, of times but, you in the pursuit of perfection, you don't get you done. It's me. No, you I, get no, no. I get it done, but yeah. I I battle that. I'm like, I waste time. I get things done, definitely, but I waste time thinking of how I can do it the best versus investing in the ne first next step. Th this thing that I always talk about, right? And I still do that next step, but it takes me a while to not think that way. If that makes yeah. sense? No, you know? that makes sense. But uh, whatever the theory is, it's like your task expands the time that you allot it. Yes. So. Done. My done is better than your perfect has been a re uh, something I think about constantly. Beautiful. As well as keep it simple. But that's yep. like um, there's a lot of people in the head constantly talking. I'm like, shut the fuck up. Trying yes. to get stuff done. Yep. Not perfect, but done. Love it. 
I had one rec- recently, actually. And I don't know. It, I don't know if this is the best piece of advice I've heard, but it's pretty recent one. And it definitely stuck. Like, I'll never forget this analogy now. Um, interview Ed Milet and ah, forget I forget the individual. And basically the concept they were speaking about, you know, making mistakes. And when you make mistakes, you know, how can you how can you stop making mistakes? And the analogy that this gentleman brought to the table was take the most important thing in your life as a human being. So look at your daughter, look at your wife, look at your mom, look at your best friend. Imagine if that person were to be watching you 24 hours a day. So anytime you're debating, making a mistake, doing something that's not, you know, in line with your values, if you put yourself in a position to where like my daughter is watching me 24 hours a day, that's going to keep me pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's like finding somebody that you would want, like if my grandfather was watching me 24 hours a day, which I mean, he is, is. he He is for sure. But if I thought like that, I would definitely make less mistakes. So then I started not only thinking about the individuals that I would place there, but I was like, wow, if you're really in the moment and you're debating something and you know, if it's not in line with your core values and your character, think about that individual that's watching you 24 hours a day. It's really good. Right. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Next question from Bruce W. Brucey. Bruce. Went to high school with Bruce. He did. He ate the chocolate cake and Matilda, Bruce. Yeah. Oh, oh Bruce. I know Bruce. Do you <laughs> Bruce. know I wanted to eat that chocolate cake so bad? Everyone did, dude. Okay, that and you know what also is weird? Sorry to get off track with Bruce. The, the lady who wears the belt looks like me. No, I, I always wanted to smell Kimmy Gibbler's feet. Is that weird? <laughs> Next question. Is that weird? Is that weird? No comment. Do you know who Kimmy Gibbler is? I know who Kimmy Gibbler right, is. Right. Out of all the people on that show, that is the last person I would well, want to smell. Well, I love DJ. I love DJ Tanner. But well, why not smell DJ's feet? Nah, because she, she, oh, everyone would run from her feet. So I always wanted to smell See how what bad. it was like. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> just threw me for a loop on yeah, that yeah, one. Yeah, there you go. Um, <laughs> Good. What are some red flags you watch out for in terms of people you surround yourself with? Someone wanting to smell someone's feet. <laughs> Yo, have you seen, by the way, the uh, the red flags on Instagram? All these memes. So good. Oh, my God. I fell into a couple of them. It yeah, was like, if fine. you wear old shoes, red flag. And I was like, I feel like they were going at me. Listen, listen. Yeah, there was one that said, if you had of a beard, if you're over six feet, have tattoos. It was very specific. Yes, yeah. 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 But literally, it was like, I was like, oh, damn. Scoliosis when you were born. <laughs> but the red flag level was like, like 20. No, no, no. 20, 20, 20. Well, the tw- fact that you say 20 is tw- a red flag. <laughs> I, felt, I felt I felt so attacked. I felt yeah. so attacked. Um, my, what it, my big red flags are like if someone's super selfish and like motivated by the wrong reasons um, or just like, I don't know, it's it just not in alignment. Like, ru- you know what the biggest one is? Rude to people. Mm. Like if someone's rude to a waiter or waitress, Within reason. I mean, some right, people right. I've been with. <laughs> that make scenes. You make scenes. But I'm saying generally. Yes, yes. Like, very rude to any anyone that is in. When you're in a position of, you know, getting waited on or someone servicing you and you're super rude for no reason, that's like the biggest. Well, that's play. a very specific one. I like that. Right? Yep. I'll turn it to business. And no no tipping, too. Ooh, gives me big red that, flags. That's bad. Yeah. Yeah, I hate that. Gives me anxiety. Um, on a business level, one of the biggest red flags for me is after a conversation if i feel that that individual is not willing to learn Mm -hmm. like i'm not even i'm not even taking a gamble on like they're not listening to what you're saying and want to yes it's pretty good one like and not not willing to learn from me just anyone willing to learn in general like if you're trying you know if you're going on a job interview yeah right and and the reason why i'm speaking on this is because i just experienced this (laughs) um super red flag gentleman is is interviewing for a job absolutely was qualified for the job A hundred percent. Great skill set in terms of uh, his experience, super technical, um, exactly what we were looking for with the resume. Speaking to him, I can tell that he was not willing to learn anything new because he already had it figured out in his head. Mm -hmm. He believed that he was already the best at, you know, the the best person for the job, which is good to have confidence. I feel like, you know, we have an extreme level of confidence, which is good. I, I, I have a lot of confidence, I would say. Right. Yeah. I, I, my my fashion, not so much, but everything. Well, else, yeah, your know. fashion is uh, mediocre. I'm having um, a glove. You are. We know you're, you're already. I see. Look at the, the feet. The suit with the pom pom. Um, <laughs> pow pow. <laughs> the pom pom. The pom pom. Pow pow. Um, but the the feeling that I got from this individual, I was like, I couldn't wait to get him out of my office. Uh, on that note, someone I don't know who it said. Someone that I listened to said, "Hire for attitude, and then teach skill." Ooh. So don't hire for skill. 
because you could always teach a skill. I agree. 100%. I mean, they need a base. I agree. Uh, correct. But it's much easier to get someone with a good attitude to. Yes. And somebody that's willing, like attitude, willing to learn, you, that's moldable. That's what you want. That's moldable. You, The last thing I want, I don't care if you're 20 or you're 70, if you're not willing to at least hear things and learn and blend ideas together and find the best approach versus just your approach, I'm not. that's a red flag for me. Um, so, yeah, that's good. Um, next question from Bill G. Bill G. It's an odd name. William. William G. Oh, Bill G. Yes. Bill. I thought the name was Bill G. G. Bill G. William, like G. Al G. William, last name G. How do you overcome your fear of doing something you don't want to do? Hmm. Hmm. It depends. If it's something that I need to do. You got to dive in, right? You got to dive in. But if it's something that I don't want to do and I fear doing it, but it's something that I don't need to do, you don't do it. Just don't do it, you know? Yeah. But if you need to do it, for example, for real estate, mm -hmm. a lot of people are afraid to make phone calls, right? It's, which is weird. I would think people would be more afraid to meet, have in person meetings, but people don't mind that. For some reason, people are terrified of calling people. Do you fear sense of that? rejection? Maybe fear of rejection, whatever it is. So the only way to get over that is just do it constantly. Yeah. And then it just becomes like, oh, it's I've been on the phone. Mm -hmm. Or you do an abbreviated version of what you need to do. Yep. For example, when you don't have any downside, you can get more used to the action. Then you like practicing. Like if, you, if you're afraid to you hop on the phone, just order pizza a bunch or order, you know, get on the phone with just random people and ask questions for... You know, for real estate, yep. call stagers and get every stagers quote for something. So you call five stagers. All of a sudden, you added value to your knowledge in the marketplace, but you're also warming up your conversational, getting comfortable on the phone. Yep. And then you translate that to calling leads. Does that make mm, sense? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I agree. I have one that's very similar, and I'm trying to think of specifics here. And again, the first one that comes is or is, rip pre workout is, and just go after it, which is, is a uh, business idea. oriented one. Once I got put in a position to to understand that now okay i really had to public speak i literally started recording myself mm. in front of nobody then that transitioned to practicing in front of my wife mm -hmm. right did that pretty consistently anytime i would have like a speech that would come up or if i had to go present something uh budget season was always a big one where i had to like go in front of the board and now i'm requesting funding to come my way i didn't like speaking like that so i did that in stages but in short i kind of dove in but i didn't dive like head first in right i didn't just go in front of people and you know start spewing numbers to try to receive a budget mm -hmm. um i did it in stages and to that same point going to fitness now there was this individual that um was taking my boot camp back when i was doing that probably 2013 or 14 somewhere around there very overweight individual came and said listen my wife signed me up for this. I don't want to do it. I'm honestly embarrassed to be here in front of people. At least he was honest. Super honest, that's, right? That's so I said, look, good. you got two options. I said, one, you can not do it. I don't, you know, I'm not going to make, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, I'm yeah. not going to make you do it. Or there's like a track over there that you can kind of just walk on your own and you can act like you were in the boot camp. Like, don't force yourself into something that you don't want to do. He was like, oh, that sounds like a good idea. So one, he didn't want to work out. He was fearful of looking stupid i guess in front of people and you know i did some stuff that was like to the beat so like you know you would punch you would punch kind of like a zumba thing like there was a, a portion of that so i could see how he like <laughs> i just envisioned you like in zumba. Zumba. I, uh, <laughs> and then my head i thought doomba dave, dave, zumba. <laughs> dave zumba there you go but you know i can see how somebody who's extremely overweight and not into fitness would be you know embarrassed and fearful of of performing in front of people and what he ended up doing so i remember day one like he like walked around the track then day two, and this kind of remained for the same, for the duration of the program, what he did was he actually stood off to the side, and all he did was, it was called high knees and breathe, right? And he felt comfortable doing that in front of people. Mm -hmm. He wasn't going along with what we were doing, but he wanted to still feel like he was a part of the, the community. Energy. Right. So he ended up doing that, and then by the end of the program, he ended up losing 30 pounds, and he felt really good, still didn't get involved to, you know, the aspect that I guess he really wanted to. But he also kind of dove right in and almost seems like that's the only answer. Right. So he started with like just walking around the track 
Then he was like, you know what? I feel a little comfortable, but it's uncomfortable to do this. But I'm just going to kind of stand there and, and do what I can do. Um, everybody was super encouraging. Nobody was, you know, oh, look at that guy over there. Ended up like, you know, becoming really good friends with the guy. And, you know, that whole community it was an awesome thing to see. So I think the re real answer is like you got you got to if it's something you want to do mm -hmm. and you have a vision and a goal, you got to dive in in some form. Mm -hmm. Right. But it. You can't be full force right away. Yeah. And then you think about what's the worst case. It's like, worst case is someone hangs up on me. Is that going to make yep. a big difference? There you go. Yep. No. Right. So you're like, who cares? Worst case, maybe a couple of people laugh, but majority of people aren't good public speakers anyway. So like they know yep. it's tough up here. So like, who cares? You know, I just hate oh, the personal level. I hate feeling stupid up in front of people. See, I don't care. Oof. No, about that. uh, no, I'll take that back. I hate feeling stupid. Like I hate feeling stupid when. It's a I'm trying to phrase this correctly when it's something that I feel like I shouldn't feel stupid about. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like if I go to a listing presentation and they have a very different view of what their property's worth yep. and mine and there's a disconnect, then I feel like an idiot. Even though I know that my estimation and data is correct, mm -hmm. you still feel a little stupid because yeah. you're like. And I notice it too on people like when I see that somebody's not prepared for a speech. Yeah, yeah. I know you see it. Like you, you know, in, in the industry that, that we're in, like you can tell when people aren't prepared. Yeah. That feeling though, I feel stupid for that person. Yeah, you get like anxiety about yeah, for them. Yeah, yeah, Seriously. Yeah. And and it's off of a lack of preparation. So when yeah. you're not prepared, I mean, it's your fault. Uh, but it this is a fearful like I yeah. feel bad for you. Yeah. It happens though. It happens so to me like, too. Because yeah. there's sometimes where like if I get asked a question and now I can prepare for that question. Yeah. And then you could I feel that I'm mumbling around. Yeah. Like, uh, I do it but here it on happens. the podcast sometimes. It happens. I do it all the time. Yeah. This is my life. Yeah. Good question. That's good. All right. Final question. Beautiful. From David G. By the way, all names are fictitious. Oh. I was going to say this one coming up. <laughs> this one coming yeah, you're up. You're just throwing G at the from end of every yeah, name. Yeah. Dave G. This one coming up is actually Listen from. Back, uh, no, no. I, I just happen to know this individual. This one's from Richie, man. You know Richie. Rich. Oh, Rich for it press. wasn't David Goggins. No. Oh. oh, I wish it was David Goggins. <laughs> um, yeah, no, we we do that. We you try to hide the names just because some people want anonymous stuff. Um, some people are forthcoming with situations. We don't want to put anybody in the spot. Hey, so. I thought Serena Williams, Bruce <laughs> Wayne, Bill Gates. I thought they were all you know were all listening to our podcast. Go ahead, man. Okay, last question. Yep. What advice would you give for being the most self aware version of yourself? Mm. Very deep question. What advice would you give for being the most self-aware version of yourself? So self-awareness, I think, is understanding, one, your goals, two, your vision, three, where you really want to be in life. I think if you don't understand that, it's hard to be self-aware, right? Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Yeah. I also think that self-awareness is not really what your friends think of you. Mm. It's not really what your family thinks of you. Mm. It's what you know yourself to really be. And the best advice I think I can give is in the moment when you have a specific goal in mind, whether it's like losing 10 pounds or trying to get a new job, you have to be able to coach yourself in real time, mm -hmm. right? The same way you would give somebody advice is the same way that you have to give yourself advice. So like if you're online at McDonald's and you have a goal of losing 10 pounds, you have to find the ability to say, I'm in line at McDonald's. If this is not a scheduled cheat meal, what am I doing? Get off the line or order a salad. The hardest thing in the world to do. But that would be the advice. Set one specific goal. And then in real time, when you're going through your day, evaluate the specific actions does that make sense yeah yep. it does what if what if it's not goal oriented just general I think, I think that answered I, you I, get it what made sense. no I, I think the, i think the best version of a self-aware person does have a goal but you're saying if you do, if you don't I, yeah have like a, for I, example I, like you know I when an answer for that your actions or just things you say if you're not you know emotionally supportive to your wife or yeah. whatever i mean it could be but that's a goal so, that's See, those are goals like, if you're not emotionally supportive to your wife, but you want to be emotionally supportive to your wife, your goal is, I want to be emotionally supportive. Well, maybe you don't want to. That's why the whole self-awareness is understanding that, although you may not be that person, understanding that she wants that, maybe. Gotcha. Right? And that, so that's what I mean by a little bit I more think, broader. Gotcha. Yeah, I think you need to reflect on your actual actions 
and then you have to create a scoreboard for yourself where you're like, you know, I want, it's very important for me that I have family time or whatever it is. I think you need simple like mottos that you live by. Like it's very important for me to be a good person just generally. I know it's a general thing, but it's an easy thing that when you're looking at yourself day to day, mm -hmm. you can say, well, you know, I want to be a good person, so I shouldn't do that. Right. Right. Or, you know, um, so like values, like, yeah, like values, models, whatever the term, like yeah. people have things they read every day. You ever hear of that? Um, uh, what the hell are they called? Mo no. Frank, what's it called? I forget what it's called, but people have them a lot in sales industries. It's like, I am going to be this. I'm going to oh, be that. Uh, words of affirmation. Affirmation. So I think to some extent, the more simple you make your core, like maybe top three, it's mm -hmm. easier to be aware yes. because you're not overcomplicating it. Right. right? Yep. Um, I do think for somebody who's not self-aware at all, you do have to narrow things down. To you, you have to figure out your life in terms of, okay, do I want to be the best Dave Regina as a friend, right? Is that the lane I want to go? Do I want to be the best Dave Regina as a husband? Do I want to be best in business? Do I want to be best in fitness? Before you just say, oh, yeah, I want to be the best Dave Regina of all time mm -hmm. with all of it. You, yeah, have yeah. To, you have to learn how to do it specifically. Um, I know this, something that I was extremely self-aware of that I screwed up on in my journey to getting the job that I'm in now. I remember specifically making a very bad decision that I shouldn't have made, um, but it allowed me to be self-aware to make sure that it didn't happen again. And what it was, was coworkers were going out. I'm in now, a, I was in a position, I was, you know, assistant commissioner, but on a different, different level to where my, um, I guess, camaraderie with the staff, I still have great camaraderie with the staff, but it, 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 it is a little different now. It's just a fact, it is what it is. Um, I was always one to, you know, go out and drink and stay the latest with the staff. You know, it was something that I, I, I loved doing for myself. I loved doing it for them, but I, it was just a good time. So I remember being in a place and I, 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 I remember the voice in my head when I was driving. It was like, make sure you go home after like a couple of drinks. Make sure you go home after a couple of drinks. Make sure you go home after a couple of drinks. Sure enough, I end up like witnessing all this extra activity that I shouldn't have been witnessing, stayed out to like two in the morning with the staff. Meanwhile, I'm attempting to now receive this new job opportunity. Thank God I didn't make any bad, really bad decisions that evening. But I remember telling myself, you just really screwed up because if you're trying to get this respect of this new position, you got to be able to show some self-discipline in the moment. And I didn't do it. Well, you know? a, that yeah, reflection. But I was aware. I mean, I was yeah. aware, but it still didn't make it right. Like I, I didn't do the right thing. Yeah. At that time. Yeah. But you, I mean, it's it's. I think part of self awareness is being able to keep reflecting and auditing. Yeah. The the more you look back and keep auditing, like one of the things I realized was like, I need to be more organized. Like that was my thing. My past year is like I'm not going to get to where I want to be, um, in any facet of my life if I'm not organized. Or another level of organization. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's a fact. Mike. And and there's I only think... the other thing is you get aware of like I have a so I'm not able to get everything done that I want to get done. Then the realization becomes, well, I only have a certain amount of bandwidth. All right. So now I have a certain amount of bandwidth. So what can I do to free up bandwidth? Right. I gave up golf. Basically, I was like, listen, I don't I enjoy it, but I'm never going to be. I, I don't enjoy it enough where I will sacrifice these other things. Gotcha. Right? Yep. So then it, you just keep constantly recalibrating mm -hmm. and say another kid comes in the future. I'm going to have to recalibrate again. I'm going to be like, all right, well, I can't do this and continue to do this. So it's just constantly looking and being like, what's not working? What's working? Yep. Um, CV, did you, you, you want to jump in there? Or yeah, I wanted to ask. I mean, you guys are explaining it pretty pretty well, um, but it, I'm not. it's, gonna, it's getting ahead, the, uh, the wheels turning. What do you guys value more or how, in the balance of, of your personal thing? Do you value do you value more um, being self-aware in the in the professional sense or do you value more being self-aware in the personal sense? Mm. And or is it just a balance of the balances? Yeah, <laughs> I think I think it all is in, it all integrates. I, I, that I have that was David G's uh, question, by the way. <laughs> I have something for sure that I've been thinking about that I think I've come to the conclusion with. And I remember, I think we spoke about it on uh, the championship episode that we did, you know, a while back. Mm -hmm. The Jordan? Yeah, yeah. The, the, our, I think that was the 23rd episode, right? Nice clip, by the way, of the of you the other day during that yeah, episode. Yeah, my hair looked terrible. That was a terrible You had, you had, a, you had a buzz cut. I don't know. I must have done it because it was middle of COVID, right? Yeah, it was. Yeah. Buzz cut. Um, but I've come to the conclusion that it's not exactly 
a balance. You know, we use the term balance all the time, but it's being able to compartmentalize when you're in a specific area. So I don't think one is more important than the other. Like I now just, and this is a odd thing that I do when I am driving to work after my daily prayer and all that stuff. And right before I walk into work, Dave, you're at work. You're the deputy commissioner. I walk in the building, right? When I get home, so, so in that moment, now I'm operating as Dave, the deputy commissioner. Of course, if my wife calls me, you know, I'm, I'm, then I have to jump into another mode. When I get home, right before I walk up my steps, I'm Dave Regina. I am a great husband and a phenomenal father. And I walk in the house. And it's helped me so much to where now I am focused on the task at hand. I know that my daughter is going to be crazy. I know my wife is already going to be frustrated because she's been dealing with her for the past two to three hours. But I'm, I can't focus on Deputy Commissioner Dave anymore. Mm-hmm. I have to be in the moment as dad and father. right? And that little tip has helped me so much because before I remember trying, I was trying to, tr- you're trying to balance it all. You're just trying to do it all. Where it's like, no, I'm 100% Dave Regina Deputy Commissioner when I walk in that building. Then when I walk into my house, I'm 100% Dave Regina, father and husband. When I walk into the gym, same thing in fitness. I'm there to get it in. I'm not there to, to, you know, to chop it up. I'm not there to be on my phone, to be on Instagram. Yes, I take a picture, right? I literally take a picture and I put my phone away. And then before, once I get in the car, then I sit there and I do it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But I'm not doing that stuff in in the time frame of when I'm in that department i guess i'll say see for me i for my motivational purposes or like to keep me going i have to link it back to being a father so like the goal ultimate goal for me is to be a good father husband you know build a life that i'm proud of which is very foo-foo but it's the be on the basic level you know raise your kids correctly that they're nice leave an impact on people but also like build something that i'm proud of and i actually enjoy doing but the only way I can do that is if I am a great real estate agent, right? And the only way I'm a great real estate agent is if I'm a good dad and I understand empathy. So it's like, oh, the, my man said empathy. I've like never that? heard that word from you. Wow. But but you it's sick. But it's hard because <laughs> oh, I'm just it's a pom pom. <laughs> but even like when you're at work, yep. people are like, "How's your daughter?" Yeah. Like it's constantly. Yep. So for me, I've been less. The only thing that I really compartmentalize, and you can't really even do it, is when I leave my office. I'm back in the dad mode. Yep. But I'm there's a lot of the stress is alleviated, but if something pops up, I can do it on the fly, but the majority of the stress is alleviated because I'm leaving the chaos of an office, mm-hmm. going home to a place that's safe, whatever. Yep. And, you know, so that that's the only compartmentalized that I helped with stress levels, but as far as like everything that drives me now is my daughter. You know, it is my wife, it yep. is my yep. family. Yep. So it's it's not so much of like I walk in, I'm like, I'm an agent, a real estate agent. It's like, I'm a dad. I'm going to sit down and do something amazing. But at the end of the day, it's all for the family anyway. Mm-hmm. So it's yeah. similar. No, no, I think I think you said it well. Um, but I'm telling you for me personally, and, and you know, I, I do research on people that I follow. And I, yeah, the black I mamba to. mentality type like, thing. Where you switch it on. Switch it on, switch it off. But also always remaining like just because i'm deputy commissioner day doesn't mean that i gotta be a dick no no i didn't mean you, like you know that. what i mean but. um but it has helped me so much because i'm looking now i'm looking at my life and i'm like okay i'm gonna continue to get more things on my plate i'm gonna continue to get new opportunities if i am seeking a life of a no snooze lifestyle no snooze mindset building a brand building a life There's going to be another project at some point that you take on. There's Mm going to be another job opportunity that you take on. So your plate is always going to be full. But I have to what I have to do is make sure that I am able to be in the moment of each thing because there's too many things for me to just try to balance in my in my thought. You know what I mean? Yeah. Does that make sense? No, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Tough, though. Tough. So they're both important, I think, is the answer. Yeah. Yeah. Good questions from the the people for real they were really good um you know what i want to do too i want to do a uh and i guess it should be one of the n- next few episodes is um a year recap of goals like, of no not, not even the goals i mean yeah i think that will come out of it but like you know your favorite book for the year what was your favorite moment of the year what was your worst moment of the year i i was so interesting uh, interested on my ride here like wondering about that stuff mm-hmm. you know like if, if we had to pick like specific moments throughout the year especially as new parents and stuff like that yeah, I think it'd be a good episode. Yeah, right. Definitely. 
Um, no, so those those questions are are great. Thank you guys for for putting that in. Um, you have anything that you want to touch on before we go to my favorite section? Dave Zam Louis. Um, I've been trying to bring some value each week when it comes to finances because I'm really interested in it. So the, I'll make a couple quick comments. First comment. I don't think it's an excuse. You have the you have the responsibility of your family to if you are the one who does the finances to learn because there's no excuse anymore with YouTube and all these free uh, materials to learn more and more and just get better each day. Yep. But I don't think being naive to finances is is a uh, fair enough excuse anymore for people. I agree because it's very uh, attainable. It's something that I know money isn't everything, but it's a tool that is going to assist you with everything. you might so i heard someone say this you might not care about money but money cares about you 100 okay so that's the one and then the second thing i've been thinking about a lot is like liquidity which is a term that basically means if to be able to use the money that you have in the investments and it's something i constantly think about because it's great to hodl or whatever the term is to save all your money and never touch it or be able to touch it like your ira and all that stuff but if the whole journey you're not enjoying any of it or like being able to leverage it and create more money. That's different because you're enjoying it. Yeah. Yeah. You're a good example. It's that's the balance thing. It's like, yes, you can have all the money in the world in the future, but if you're not able to enjoy it and, you know, share with your family, friends, then what's the point of building it? I agree. So if you have liquidity, which is also translates to safety, because if you have a backstop of like, yes, I have these investments, but I could, pull money out at any time and there's different levels of it i have cash whatever it is then you're uh, you're operating from a stance of power versus despair uh being desperate which makes you make better decisions and then compounds mm -hmm. so i've been thinking that a lot lately because there are investment opportunities that always arise that are going to you know time or money is basically your trade of time so there are opportunities where you can put a bunch of your time that you earned which is money into something but if it's locked up for 10 years, if that money is going to be worth triple in the future, but you can't touch it for 10 years, how are you going to survive 10 years? Mm -hmm. Right? Yep. I'm going off of the investment into Dave's Dime of the Week. Which is also an investment. <laughs> so this is um this is pretty... I should have waited. I'm good? Let him fall. Let him fall. Yeah, let him... Let him... Come on. Can I swallow? Catch him? <laughs> All right. So this is a little Dave Regina-esque. It's one of those like, you know... Kind of, kind of jab. Put it in the hip. Yeah, like you know, you, you get hit and you turn it type thing. If the word "quit" is part of your vocabulary, then the word "finish" is likely not. And I say that because it's December now, one month left. Right, the conversation we've been having for you know a couple of weeks, I guess maybe dating back to October, is we're right here, home stretch, going into twenty twenty two. Right. A lot of people are taking their foot off the gas right now. If it's one thing that you can continue to do in one lane of your life, whether that's fitness, obviously, we're going to enjoy the holidays, whether it's business, whether it's investing, whether it's your relationships, go all in on something and finish the year strong. Don't just wait until next year. Right. The concept and the best concept is always start tomorrow. Right. Mm -hmm. Done's better than perfect. There you go. Boom. Mike's going to be like, I think we should end on that. Yeah, that was a good one. <laughs> yeah, me, Miguel's mantra is I done is better than perfect. I mean, it's, Wait, you didn't let, let him dance real quick. I know. He's dancing, though. <laughs> he's, he's going. He's going. He's but going. it's simple. You just keep it simple. Just get stuff done and let the momentum roll. Get the momentum going. Get the momentum. Skip the roll. What is the, what is the term? A uh, object? I'll give you one. Miguel's mantra. <laughs> dance up there. There we go. Can we have Bitcoin drop it for me? Right, there you go. Uh, a object in motion stays in motion. Momentum. Momentum. That's a fact. Accelerate through the end of the year. Wow. That's a good one. I like that. CV, do you have one or are you good? No? Ready to rock? Guys, we appreciate you. Head to nosnooshop.com. Get your hoodies, man. It's hoodie season in full effect. I need more uh, onesies. Like, onesies. not onesies. Sweatsuits that match. They don't match a lot of them. So why don't we make them? Because they don't have matching pants with matching hoodies. We got us to write them a letter. We, we got to. All right. We, anyway, we got to figure something out. Check it out. Yes, guys. Thank you for tuning in. Until next time, stop snoozing. Get up and get after it. Ranger game. That's another Effie in the books. Go follow us on Instagram and Facebook at No Snooze Podcast. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, No Snooze.
好吗？<笑>